Folks, we're gonna talk about tractor hydraulics today. We're at our shop, at our facility, and we have a lot of extra auxiliary hydraulics going on right now. We have some that are in process, we have some that are already done. I'm gonna take you through the basics, the understanding of the terminology, what the extra stuff is that you can add onto your machine. Try to put it in layman's terms, okay? I'm, I'm not all technical and fancy, so I wanna to try to put this in, in mention it in a way that you can understand and relate to and how you can actually just put this to work with your tractor. Okay, so first let's start out with a basic understanding of what the hydraulics are. You're gonna have a hydraulic system on your tractor. Most tractors in the compact world are gonna be hydrostatic, all right? So power comes off the engine, goes through a, a, a drive line all the way to the back to the hydrostatic transmission. That's gonna feed and power the transmission, but also the rest of the hydraulics on the tractor too. You'll have a hydraulic pump there that's helping out, of course, and a hydraulic reservoir to, to contain the extra hydraulic fluid uh, for whatever you're doing. Now, most tractors, if you have a front end loader, are going to already have couplers on there, all right? They're already gonna have four couplers on there and a loader joystick, all right? A fender mounted loader joystick. Now, technically this isn't on the fender, but it's back here by the operator seat. You'll see a lot of them that come right out of the fender, especially on open station tractors as well. There will be some tractors, the John Deere 3E series comes to mind, that are not going to come loader ready. They're not gonna have a joystick on them. They're not gonna have the extra couplers that are here ready just to add a loader and get to work. If you buy the loader package, then that'll come with all of the extra hydraulics you need, the lines that tie into the transaxle. There'll be a, a loader mounted joystick on there too. Okay, so this is a John Deere 3032E. When I mentioned some models out there do not come with a loader prep package, this is gonna be one of them. You can see how this loader joystick is mounted here as part of the loader. It's not back here on the fender anywhere. And there's also not gonna be quick couplers either. So these are just gonna be hard lines that you see these black lines that are down here. They're gonna come with the loader kit so it's not a quick park loader either. I do believe you can actually buy an optional quick park kit for this, but you know, to be honest, I don't know why you would take the loader off really. So, however, we do actually have the bigger series of John Deere that does not have a loader prep package. So this is another one, very similar setup to the, to the 3E. This is the 4M, okay? So again, you have your joystick up here that's gonna be part of the loader package, not mounted anywhere on the fender. So if this was a John Deere 4R series, it would have that joystick mounted back here on the fender, but the 4M has it mounted up here. And again, the same hard line set, no quick couplers to be able to quickly disconnect and remove this, and the loader is not removable either. Okay, so again, I don't think, when you start to get to these bigger tractors that uh, having a quick park loader or a removable loader is a big deal at all. I have tractors that size and I never take it off. So. Where most folks want to take their loader off is, go ahead, Chris. Thank you. When most folks want to take their loader off, it's because they're going to put a front mount snowblower on, but you can't even put a front mount snowblower on those tractors anyway. So there really isn't a reason to do that. You're going to save a bit of money too on those models because it's not quick parks. So there's less engineering, less brackets and adapters involved, no quick couplers, all that kind of stuff too. Uh, but they are normally found on cheaper models or. Mm, more economical models too. Uh, maybe that's a better way to put it. So I wanna to explain to you in the simplest way how a hydraulic system works and how you're using that on your tractor, whether it's with the front end loader raising and lowering it or curling and rolling a bucket or opening and closing the jaws of a grapple or whatever you're doing, it all comes down to hydraulic flow moving in a certain direction, okay? Either going through a line this way or coming back through and going the other direction. And that's going to either extend or retract a rod within the cylinder, okay? So you're either pulling it back in or pushing it out, and that's gonna make something go one way or the other. So let's give you an example here, show you how this works. Okay, so all you're gonna do generally, now this could be with a loader joystick, this could be with a lever, this could be with a push button, depending on what kind of hydraulics you have on your tractor, but you're going to do something that causes the, the hydraulic system to work, okay? Your tractor has to be on. If your tractor's off, there's no hydraulic pump moving, there's no hydraulic oil flowing through the system or being pushed through the system. So you have to have it on to have that power. After that, you're simply pushing a lever. I've got a lever here that controls the rear remote. I'm pushing it one way, and that hydraulic oil is flowing through these lines, 
and making that rod go out and extend, okay? This is on a hydraulic top leg. Same process on a loader, okay? On a backhoe, on all those kinds of attachments. That's just very simple how it works. Okay, so the first term for you though is, what's, is it an acronym? What's SCV, is that well, an acronym? It's an, yeah, I guess. An abbreviation? Does the acronym need to stand for a word? I don't know. I don't think so. Our first thing that is kind of like a thing for tractor lingo is gonna be SCV. And you'll hear that oftentimes. You'll see it in listings and they yeah, will just sprinkle it around all over the place. And that stands for selective control valve, all right? And pretty simple. All, all it is is a valve that selects what you control. Does that make sense? Is that, is that clear? Well, what's a valve? What's a valve? A valve, so this is funny because uh, my son Luke has a science test today that we were studying for last night and again this morning. Fingers crossed he does well on that. But anyways, and, and uh, we had to talk about a valve in your heart as part of your cardiovascular system and what the function is of the valve. And on his homework that he had, it said the valve is designed for, to keep blood from going backwards. And so that's essentially what it's doing with hydraulic fluid as well as it's a stopping point that you control with a lever of some kind to allow that flow to continue on or not, or in some cases reverse and go the other direction, depends what it is. But that's what we have going on here. We have two valves, the first and the second function, okay? And here's a list, first, second, first function, second function, third, fourth, fifth, we might even see a sixth function today, okay? So the first two are what control your loader. The first function makes your loader go up and down, okay? Because again, flow goes both directions. And then the second function makes your bucket curl or roll. Or if you had a set of pallet forks attached to your loader, it would make the pallet forks tip up and down. If you had a grapple, it would make the grapple tip up and down, that kind of thing, okay? So that's what this loader joystick is controlling, is the first and second function. An SCV is two plugs or two ports, okay? If you see four of them here, you don't have four SCVs. You have two SCVs because again, the flow needs to be able to go and then return, okay? Or go this way and then return back that way. Same thing with this one. So a pair is one. So that's one SCV, that's two SCVs. Now to be perfect. actually has diagram on it. With arrows going both ways for the cylinder. It does. I've seen that before. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've seen that, but I never even paid any attention to it. It's just but, to help uh, you know that it's not these two going together. Yeah, you can see what ones are paired together. These so these two and then those two right there. Good catch there, Chris. Okay, so on that note, let's dive into what a third function is. That's going to be the most popular type of extra hydraulic that gets added to a tractor. And it is essentially, well, there's one brand out there that we actually partnered with for a while, Summit Tractors they have a third function as standard on their tractor. I think they're the only brand out there that does. Maybe there's another that does, but I'm pretty sure it's always optional. So a third function is what you need to control a grapple, okay? Because again, your, your primary, your first and second functions that are on the tractor, they're raising and lowering the loader, they're curling and rolling the bucket or curling and rolling the grapple, but what's gonna open and close the jaws of a grapple? You need to have a third function. It has its own hydraulic cylinder that's on there to open and close the jaws of the grapple. Let's go down here and take a look. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So here we have a tractor that's just getting final detail prepped and we added on a third function to it we added on a hydraulic top link i think on this one as well we also added on a grapple so this tractor did not it wasn't grapple ready okay if a tractor is listed as being grapple ready it's going to have a third function on there we talked about the hydraulics that are back there for the loader looks pretty similar doesn't it except these are mounted up front so that when you connect your grapple you have connections right here for the hydraulic system so you can tie it all in together and operate it that way so this is, they say grapple ready, even though it can be used for other things. Again, you can put a hydraulic angling snowplow on here if you wanted to. Uh, you can run a, uh, a loader mounted post hole digger and put it on there. We actually have tied them into hydraulic skid steer quick attach couplers 
and operated them that way too. Chris, you got any, anything else? Four in one bucket, baby. Oh yeah, four in one bucket. We actually just put that listing up today. So a four in one bucket, basically uh, the sides, well, a portion of it flips up and you can grapple onto things. You can use it like a regular bucket, use it like a dozer blade, all sorts of stuff. Really awesome. Check that on the website. We also use that loader mounted brush hog. We did. We used a loader mounted brush hog as well last summer. Uh, plugged it right in, hooked it up to the skid steer quick attach. And again, you're controlling all that. Chris, come on over here and show them. You get something called a thumb control on here, okay? And you're gonna have a couple of buttons you can push. You push it to uh, one of the buttons to open the jaws of the grapple. You push the other button to close the jaws of the grapple, all right? And this is a, a do-it-yourself solution from Summit Hydraulics. And they're a partner of ours, and everything that you see that's the extra hydraulics, you're gonna be able to save 5% with code GWT. You'll order right on their website. But use code GWT to save 5% off of your order. This kind of stuff you can install on your own, depending on what it is, we'll talk about it all. A couple hours, you know, you can do it after work, you can do it on the weekend, uh, get it set up, save a lot of money compared to going to your deer or Kubota dealer to have them do it in their shop. You don't have to worry about transporting it in there, all that kind of stuff, the labor costs and everything else too. Now we're gonna talk about this whole contraption here in just a second, but you're gonna see something else that is offered for tractors. That's gonna be called a, a diverter, a diverter kit, a third function diverter, and that's gonna, operate similar to a third function, but not exactly the same, all right? Where a third function allows hydraulic flow to go to that function at the same time as going to your first or second function, a diverter is going to divert the flow, all right? It's going to take it from that second function, so from your curl roll, and when you push a button down, it's then going to redirect it to the third function. So you're gonna lose the ability to curl and roll when you have it engaged, but you are gonna gain the ability to open and close the jaws of a grapple. I think another way to say it would be one SCV ends up having two things it could control, but you can only use one at a time. Is that correct? So if one of those two ways makes sense, then you understand what a diverter is. It's not preferred. If you can get a third function, that is the best way to go. So go that route if you can. Summit Hydraulics offers both. All right, so we've talked about the first function and the second function, the basics, right? Those are for the loader operation. The third function ran up front, so you control a grapple, hydraulic plow, stuff that's mounted on the loader that has its own hydraulic cylinder that's on there. Now let's talk about the fourth and the fifth, okay? So this is what you see right here. You have the fourth and the fifth, or it could be the fourth and the fifth. I don't know, it's one way or the other. You're gonna have two extra functions available on the back. Now most tractors do not come standard with any rear remotes. I know that Summit tractor did come standard with a rear remote, which is pretty darn awesome. Now a lot of the Coyotes will come standard. Not all of them, I haven't fully wrapped my head around which ones all come with a standard rear remote, but most of them do come with one standard rear remote. Guys, I know a lot of you are thinking, this is no big deal, I'll just add it on later if I want to. This has been the bane of existence for a lot of folks for a long time. So if you can get your tractor set up new with the extra hydraulics, great, do it that way. But you're gonna want extra hydraulics. And, and as we go through, I'm gonna keep telling you more and more things that you can use hydraulics for. But if you have the option to do it and you're gonna own your tractor for a long time, you're gonna save, well, you're gonna save a lot of agony from trying to manually adjust things, whether it's hooking attachments up whether it's side shifting flail mowers, um, even making adjustments on the fly with a hydraulic top link, how you can adjust so quickly and easily. So there's a lot of reasons for it. So this isn't just telling the information to tell you information. It's There's useful stuff that you can do with these hydraulics. Okay, so a simple, I don't know, idiot proof way to determine if, if you don't know, right? If you're just looking here and you're thinking, I don't know if this is power beyond or if it's a rear remote because they're two different things. We'll get to that. Well, if you have extra levers on your operator station, that you don't know what they're for, well, they most likely control the rear remotes, all right? If you have no extra levers on there, you don't know what they're for, well, that's probably Power Beyond because Power Beyond will not have levers on the operator station to control the hydraulic remote on the back. Normally, Power Beyond is only for backhoes and maybe log splitters, but if you have controls, let me show you. Let's just take a look. Right here, these are our two levers, okay? You have a lever for each control, and you, look at that. Looks like you might be able to do a triple stack. Sometimes these panels get reused for various series of tractors though. So 
there may not be a third rear remote that's available for this tractor. Um, you'll see that on the on all the brands that do that, but this is what I'm talking about. And, and this even has cylinders that are on here showing, you know, that's what they're for. Uh, like this is a, this one, it literally calls it the first and the second, but um, that gets confusing as well because sometimes there's not standards, but this is really the, the fourth and the fifth. The third function, if we had one, would be a, a button on the joystick here. So I've got some other examples here. I'm a visual learner, okay? So I've got some other examples to show you that I think will help clear this up too. I've got my 1025 over here that's got power beyond because it has a backhoe with it. There's no backhoe on it now, but you'll be able to see there's no lever to control that function on there. It'll help you differentiate. Now power beyond looks different on a lot of machines. We actually have this looped and tied back together. A little tip for you folks, especially 1025 owners, maybe Kubota BX owners, I don't remember. but these are the two hoses when you mount your backhoe on the back of the tractor these two hoses actually both plug into the backhoe all right so then the all the hydraulic fluid from your tractor is flowing in to the backhoe and then you've got levers that control the backhoe and that's how those functions are controlled is with levers that are on the backhoe controlling it you have no lever mounted on the tractor it's all on the backhoe so these are this is a John Deere 2038R. These are, you know, m what you may confuse with a rear remote. There's not gonna be any lever up here. The levers normally are somewhere right in this area if you did have a rear remote. So there's no levers there, okay? When the hydraulic lines are plugged in, that flow is just going all the way here and it's coming in through hydraulic lines that are tied to valves with these levers, okay? And so that's how you're gonna control things is you're gonna move the levers. Look at me. <laughs> but you're going to control and move them around and that's going to make the backhoe operate dig turn scoop whatever the heck it is that you want it to do that's the difference okay so power beyond same thing imagine it was a log splitter all right you plug in a log splitter to those same lines okay and then your log splitter has has a lever just like this on it and you push it one way and the and the uh the splitter the uh you know the knife the knife yeah goes in and splits the log and then you move the lever the other way and, and it comes back and goes the other direction. Okay, so we showed that on the um, on the split fire splitter. But same concept, all right? So anyway, that explains the difference between power beyond ah, and a rear remote. Now, not to completely confuse you, but there's another way, there's probably a million other ways that you can run a quote unquote third function, all right? And this is a this is a less than ideal one. This is a way to get by if you already have some hydraulics on your tractor just to make it work. But you'll see why it's not ideal in a minute here. So this tractor has a factory fourth and fifth function. This is a John Deere 3032E. It's got the factory fourth and fifth on it. This customer, this was a trade-in. We actually just resold it and we're actually gonna be adding an, a real third function to it because he did not wanna deal with this. But this original customer or owner of the tractor plumbed in to one of these rear remotes, the fourth function I suppose it was, and then ran lines up underneath the tractor, kind of up and around, I think it's in these, this little uh, sheathing here, down in front, and then has their grapple ready function right up front, all right? So you can see how that gets confusing because you may look at a used tractor listing and see this up here and be like, sweet, has the third function on it, it's grapple ready. Me, I've seen this kind of thing before, so I always try to take a good look at the loader joystick, okay? When I see just the regular old knob on there, I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. And so then I'm looking further and I see these levers here, all right? So that's what you would have to do. Let me sit up on here and show you. This is how you'd have to control that. This is why it's less than ideal, all right? You have your, your hand on the loader joystick, you're raising and lowering it, curling and rolling, all that kind of stuff. You wanna push a button to open or close the jaws of the grapple on a log or a brush pot or whatever. You're doing a lot of stuff, you got a lot going on, but guess what? If you wanna open or close the jaws of that grapple, well, you gotta turn around, go take your hand off of here, less than ideal, pretty much stop everything else you're doing, turn around, make sure you're grabbing the right handle, and then you know push it one way or pull it back up the other way to do whatever you want to do, and then go back and touch the loader handle, go back and do this. So technically, you've made it work. But is it ideal? No, it's not. So it's a way to get by. You could always play around with it. 
see, maybe it does work for you. Maybe it is cheaper because, well, maybe it, it is definitely cheaper. If you already had the rear hydraulics, you're just getting some hoses made up and then plumbing it in. But I think you're going to get tired of it pretty quickly and you'll want to end up putting a regular third function on there like we're going to do for this customer as well. Just a better way to do it. But as you can see, creativity, you know, knows no limits. Now to really blow your mind. We have a triple stack on here, all right? So this is my Kubota M5 got in recently. And from the factory, I had all three. Look at this. See kind of these uh, sections. One, two, three. They just keep bolting them on. I think three is as many as you can get. And you can get different kinds of rear remotes. Um, some where you push and then it comes back to center. Some where you push a lever and then it stays locked in that position. That's called um, a detent or there's a continuous flow so that you could, theoretically, you couldn't run a backhoe off of that, but you would make it an open circuit where that hydraulic flow is just constantly going. It's, it's locked in the open position and you could run a uh, hydraulic log splitter off of that. All right, you're not gonna get as much hydraulic flow as you are with Power Beyond, but it's good for limited other things. And if you're gonna deck your tractor out like I decked this one out, well, I just went for it. As you can see, we didn't stop there, though. We added another six hydraulic ports on top of that and a third function up front. Now, I know this seems a little excessive, and uh, I like to be excessive. However, you may be wondering, actually, this came up in a, uh, in a post that I, I put on recently. It's like, what in the heck are you ever going to use six hydraulic functions for? This is a six-port hydraulic multiplier. And see how this works is if you only had one, say you don't have these other rear remotes on here, say you just have one rear remote on your tractor. Well, you can turn that one rear remote into six rear remotes, or they sell a one that is four rear remotes or three rear remotes or two rear remotes. So depending on what you need, you can buy different sizes and then you just find a creative spot to put on there, mount it, and then you have a control panel inside. So you select the circuit. These are all solenoids that are on here and it selects the, the one that you want to control, whatever's plugged in there, and then you use your regular lever and then you just use it, okay? So how would you use these up? Fair question. You ready? Okay, so you could put a hydraulic top link in here, so that's gonna take one circuit. You could put a hydraulic side link in here, that's gonna take up another circuit. Those are pretty much gonna be used all the time. Those are super handy. You folks that are watching this video, please, 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 please tell folks how handy it is to have a hydraulic top link for sure. Some folks find a, a side link more handy, handier than a hydraulic top link. I think they're both super duper handy. Okay, so that's two. Okay, so right there, now they're just gonna stay on there all the time. Now, what if you have a rear attachment that has some hydraulic functions on it? I always use a snowblower, okay, because that's something that I've used before, that a rear snowblower, a pull type, that has a hydraulic chute rotation, so you can blow the snow that way or angle it, blow it whatever way you want. A hydraulic deflector, okay, it's gonna tilt this way because sometimes you want it to go way up high, sometimes you need to shoot lower, so you have that control. And then a hydraulic back drag on there too, so you can pull up close to a building, drop that thing down, and pull the snow away or you have a fancy hydraulic rear blade. You have a hydraulic angle, okay? Left or right, you can angle it. Hydraulic tilt, this way, or I guess, you know, this way. And then um, hydraulic offset, okay? To be able to shift the whole thing out one way or the other. So that's three more functions right there. So you're tying up five now between the hydraulic top link, the hydraulic tilt that you don't wanna sacrifice. You don't ever wanna unplug those to hook up some other stuff because they're so handy. You still have one left. Now, what would you use that for? Well. Soon enough, I'm going to have some more of these made up for my Kubota and for my Coyote, but we added it onto my last Kubota as well, and that is a hydraulic skid steer quick attach plate up front. That is super awesome, and yeah, it's over the top. I get it, but a lot of skid steers have it, so why can't tractors have it? Basically, you never have to leave the operator seat. If you want to take your bucket off and put a set of paddle forks on or a snow pusher, you simply you plug your hoses in here, you route it up front, you plug it into your hydraulic quick coupler and then you again same thing as anything else you're just pulling a lever and it unhooks from the skister quick attach you drive up to your other attachment pop it in there and hook it back up I'm telling you hard to beat so let's do a pop quiz for the listener you want to do a pop quiz yeah do i know the answer to the pop quiz well Is i'm this... looking at this tractor right here yeah and there's how many rear functions on this tractor. I know. So is it, I'll give it, well, make a multiple choice. Well, total that you could use? Yes, I'm making, it on the, I'm making it multiple choice. 
I don't even know what my choices should be, but we've got three here. And I just want to verify if I counted or heard you right. Is it six here? One, two, yeah. three, four, five, six. Or is it 12? So do you have 12 plus three? No, that'd be, do you have fifth? <laughs> How many? Let's just not do the multiple choice. How many do you have with a six port multiplier and three rear remote? Well, let's just talk, think about it this way. How many hydraulic functions do we have back here right now? How many, how many operations could we plug in and use here? Could we use nine? Could we use nine? Could we use 18? Could we use eight? Could we use 10? One of those is the right answer. Nine, 18, 10, or eight. Yeah. Tick tock. Tick, tick, tock, bring. What's the answer? What's the answer, Chris? Eight. Oh, good job. Good job. Nice and why is it eight? Well, it's eight because, well, we started out with three, right? But we sacrificed one of these to hook up six more. All right, so that leaves us with two here and then six. So two plus six gives us eight. And again, it takes two connections to make one function, all right? So if these were all individual, if it only took one connection, you'd have double the quantity, but we don't. It takes two connections to make one function. So we have eight here, which again is for the vast majority of us overkill, but I did it just to do it. And you have on this tractor, the two up front controlling the loader, plus yep. you have a true third function. Yes, we've got three more functions up here, the first, second, and third, because uh, right now, look at this, we've got this hooked up to a, an HLA snow wing for the parking lot out here. So these wings actually, they extend out. You can extend or retract them, all that kind of stuff too. Um, you can angle this, okay? You can angle this left or right. There's actually a diverter that's part of the snow wing package that allows you to divert the flow from the angle function or the wings. So you can go back and forth that way. All right, so now we're back looking at the hydraulic top link. And we talked about that earlier when we just talked about basic functionality of what the hydraulics do. This is just a super handy, add on if you have a rear remote on your tractor and again it's kind of one of those things that's going to stay plugged in all the time so this tractor had one rear remote so if if he just well this is for a customer that we're going to be shipping out but if um, all we did is just plug this hydraulic top link into here he couldn't use the rear remote for any other tool at any point and so he then decided <laughs> well let's have you add on uh, a, a hydraulic multiplier as well and so this is an example of a four port hydraulic multiplier that we put on this one and you can see we went from having one rear remote to now having four rear remotes we sacrificed the original but we wind up with four because that's what we uh, the size that we went with there and so now he can plug in right he can still get a hydraulic side link if he wants to he can get the rear blade that angles or tilts he can get the snow blower um, you know, there's, there's pull type mowers you can put in that plug in here and you can raise them up and down. There's a lot of different tools that you can use it for, but a hydraulic top link, first, it's gonna make hooking up to three point attachments easier, especially if you have a quick hitch on there. You know, they're not always sitting just perfect, but you can extend or retract the top link to get that hook to line up just perfectly without having to get off the operator seat. Makes life super easy. And then when you're gonna be using the tool, and this could be whether it's a, a brush hog, it could be a box blade or a lamp plane, it could be a landscape rake, all sorts of tools where you wanna make micro adjustments on the fly. And normally you're gonna be sitting here, hopping off the tractor and manually turning that top link and then getting back on the seat and driving a little bit further and seeing, did I did adjust it enough? Is that the right pitch or the right angle that I want to have it at? Well, you can just do this on the fly just by shifting that lever just a little bit, just making micro adjustments as you go along. And I even do it while I'm moving to make it more aggressive or less aggressive if I'm grading up my driveway, the gravel driveway, and I want to slowly let the material completely release. I'll just adjust this and, and maybe pull this top link in, just slowly shorten the whole thing up and then let all that gravel just gradually spill out of there and just get a really smooth mirror finish, not mirror, final finish that I'm looking for. Unbelievable. You guys, again, mention it down below. I don't know what you think is the handiest out of all the hydraulics we've talked about. Of course, your basic hydraulics for the loader are probably the number one handiest thing, but if you're gonna add on a third function, a hydraulic top link, maybe a hydraulic side link, hydraulic multiplier, adding on rear remotes, all that kind of stuff. You can get it from Summit Hydraulics, save 5% with code GWT. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's a one-time expense you have it the whole time you have the tractor. Your tools, just gonna be aware, your tools are then gonna cost a little bit more because if they have hydraulics on them, well, you gotta pay extra for the hydraulic cylinders and the brackets that they're welding on and the labor that goes with that and the hoses and all that kind of thing too. 
but makes life a lot easier, makes it more efficient. You can do a better job with them too. All right, show you here, just go right to Summit's website. Man, my fingers are a little cold right now. Summit Hydraulics, summit-hydraulics.com. And you can see here, right on their homepage, the top categories are, right? you have third function kits, front rear kits, you can get a combo. You can get one that goes on the front and on the back. Just a rear remote kit if you want that. The hydraulic cylinders, these are your top and tilt kits. Multipliers, diverter kits too, kind of like the third function, all that. But then all your extra parts down here, anything. If you want to get check valves, flow valves, if you want to slow down the, the flow rate, you can get those right there. And they also have, uh, let's see, hoses right here too. Hose assemblies as well. So if a lot of grapples that we sell, for example, don't come with hoses. A lot of attachments in general don't come with hoses. Or if you need new hoses, maybe your loader has some old ones, but you can get whatever you need there as well. So they got pretty much everything you need. Summit-hydraulics.com, 5% off code GWT. Now let's talk about, well, maybe some other cost implications depending on where you're at in your tractor ownership status. So if you are shopping for a brand new tractor, you have probably the most flexibility at that point. Um, maybe the most negotiation room too to have your dealer you know, be incentivized to give you a good discount. And some will, some won't. That depends on the dealer. Um, but maybe that's the time to add on those extra hydraulics. In my opinion, it's always a time to add on those extra hydraulics. Um, the caveat to that would be, you know, that's for the third function in rear remotes, but you may be able to get by with just one rear remote. And then if you know you're gonna need a whole bunch, just add on a hydraulic multiplier on your own after that. Same thing with the hydraulic top link too. Now, if you are already, if you already own a tractor or if you're buying a used tractor, well, you know, the cost to consider would be having to transport your tractor into a dealer to have them do the work on it. Um, the downtime that you're not going to have your tractor because of that, because normally they're not going to get it right in the schedule. Sometimes it takes two, three weeks, a month, who knows how long. Um, their labor costs that you're paying for on top of that too. So with Summit Hydraulics, again, these kits are meant to be do-it-yourself. So you can do all the stuff on your own. A lot of them include all the parts and components that you need. Sometimes they don't, but you can still get the hoses made up from them too and have them sent to you as well. So there's a lot of cost savings opportunities there because of that. And again, it's just gonna depend on where you're at in your journey and your ownership status and, and the cost and the downtime and then maybe just how handy you are too. I mean, none of this stuff is super complicated. You're just simply turning some fittings and, and tightening this stuff together and mounting it, bolting it to your machine. It's not that complicated to do. You can do this kind of project again after work or on the weekend with tools that you probably already have in your garage. Now let's give you a list of all the different attachments that use extra hydraulics. That way maybe it makes a little bit more sense. You can be like, oh yeah, I might use that attachment. And that's a good reason to get some extra hydraulics on my tractor. So all this stuff, well, pretty much all this stuff we sell on our website, goodworkstractors.com. And we ship nationwide too. So if you need a tractor tool, well, give us a shot. If you don't know what you need, what size, what hookup, whatever else, Shoot us an email, we'll get you fixed up with the right size and fit for your tractor. Now we already talked about a few obvious things, the hydraulic top link, hydraulic side link are really handy to have, a hydraulic skid steer quick attach plate up front too, but the list is just getting started. We're just gonna scroll through the website and hit these off as they come up. A hydraulic flail mower, you can hydraulically side shift or tilt those to get on ditch banks, down around ponds, along the edges of uh, trails through your woods. Grapples, of course, there's all kinds of grapples, but to open and close those jaws, you certainly need a third function. And while we're at it, you'll oftentimes see dual jaws, you know, two separate jaws on the top of a grapple. Well, those get tied in to one connection point, so you still only need a third function, just one extra function to control both of those jaws on top of the grapple, so don't worry about that. Hydraulically side shifting pallet forks, super handy. Use those all the time. Hydraulic rear blades to tilt, angle, and offset. Hydraulic dump trailers. Hydraulic snow wings, hydraulic snow plows. Spreaders, you can actually get a hydraulic gate opening for a, a three-point spreader to like to spread material. So right from your operator seat, if you have a cab on there, you can just push that lever and open and close the gate on there to stop material flow. Post hole diggers for loader mounted ones, you can actually hydraulically drive those and on the rear ones you can actually get a hydraulic down pressure kit they're going to be pto driven but you can add on a hydraulic down pressure kit you would control with that snow blowers we talked about that earlier shoot rotation deflectors back drags on there 
hydraulic tree puller or post puller. We use one of those on our skid steer, but we sell those for tractors as well. Brush hogs, now these are gonna be pull type brush hogs that would be mounted to your draw bar. And then they'll often have a hydraulic hose that you plug into the back so that you can raise the cut height, uh, either for, or for transport mode too. Uh, fold up the wings like on a big flex swing mower as well. You need hydraulics for those. The ditch box, we, that was a really handy tool actually. I, I uh, see the work we did with that all the time. The dish box uses a, um, it has a center kind of wedge that you can hydraulically raise up and down to control how deep the cut is. And that was, that was a handy tool. The high reach mini clip, you can reach way up into trees and clip off branches with that precision tool. That is a handy one for sure. Four in one buckets for tractors and for skid steers too, for that fact. Dozer blades, loader mounted brush hogs. Roto rakes, these are three point mounted and you can get them on a skid steer as well, but if you want a three point PTO driven version and you want to be able to angle it, you need the hydraulics on your tractor to do that. So folks, hopefully that helps you out. We talked about what the hydraulics on your tractor are, we talked about what they do, and we talked about why you need them. So between goodworkstractors.com and our partner Summit Hydraulics, we've got you taken care of all the things that you need to get set up and using your tractor more efficiently, more effectively. Trust me, you're gonna enjoy it, it's just, it's one of those things that once you have it, you're like, how did I ever use my tractor before this? I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Yeah.